Okay, so this is a very similar scenario to what we just had with Emma, except in this case, it is coupon paying. So there are gonna be regular cash flows across the life of the instrument. Um, so what we do, first up, first up, I think there are, there are a couple of important things to do with any sort of question, any sort of practical question that you get from here on in um, and for exams. Firstly, obviously reading the question and pulling out the information that you need. And secondly, last week is important, this week is, it's important, next week it's important, but putting up a timeline. Uh, it's really, and you'll see it when we do the hedging, it's really important to, you, to get a timeline, to get a sense of when things are happening. Um, so issue of five million, issues five million of convertible bonds. Now that's the face of the instrument, so that's not necessarily how much was paid, you know, or effectively lent. That is how much was on the face of them. We get a date for them. The bonds have a three year life and a face value of $10 each. They offer interest payable at the end of each financial year at a rate of 8%. So we've got the coupon, even though it doesn't use the word coupon in there, but you know, we're showing how much the cash flows were. The bonds are issued at face. So in this case, we know how much cash they received. Um, and each bond can be converted into one ordering share in telecom at any time in the next three years. So we have a conversion option. Uh, organizations of a similar risk profile have recently issued debt with similar terms without the option for conversion at a rate of 10% per annum. And that gives you your market rate for the liability component. Because let's, up the top here. So what we have is a three year instrument. Now what could happen is the holders do not convert. And that's outside of this, the hands of the issuer. That, that's not their choice to make. They don't have any control over that. If the holders don't convert, then at year one, they'd pay out $400,000, which is 8% of the face. $400,000, they paid $400,000, and then they would pay 5.4, which is the final 400,000 plus the face. So those are the set of cash flows that they have for the liability component. Alternatively, at any point during that, at any point over that time, they could be converted to equity. So that's in effect two separate things that are going on here, which means this is a compound instrument, which means the $5 million that they received, and if we come down to that, debit cash at bank, five million, because that is what they received up front. The issue we have here is, I mean, obviously we can see the answer because it's in front of us, but we need to somehow separate that $5 million into the liability component and into the equity component. Now, the, the liability component we can actually value because we know what the cash flows are. We also know what the discount rate is for a similar quality of debt or a similar risk level of debt. And we just take that set of cash flows, the 400, 400, 5, 4, we discount those cash flows at 10%. And you'll just have to trust me here, but feel free to just verify things in your own time. what you'll end up with is $4.75 million as the fair value or the present value of those cash flows, which is the fair value of that liability on inception. So we have effectively valued the debt. 
and that is what we put down here. So that is a fair value of the liability component. Um, and that's what you had to do for the mid-semester exam. That's what you had to do in week six. So you would have actually, in that case, because there was no conversion option attached, the amount of cash you would have got was 4.75 million. So that's the link to what you did before. But the thing is here, we valued this liability component at 4.75, but we've actually received $5 million. And that's because, I mean, I'm just going to use Emma because we had, had Emma buying, buying the instrument before. Emma values that option. She values the fact that she has that ability to pay to get equity in your business if she wants. So, and she's paid a little bit more for that. And that little bit extra comes through here. So you've got the 4.75, which is a liability component. The credit that you need to make it all balance, that's the equity component. And so we pick it up as debit cash, credit convertible bonds are liability, credit convertible, po convertible ponds, con credit convertible bonds, the equity component. So we've effectively split that up into the two separate items. Now, from that point, until you convert, you can actually then forget about this. And the question actually runs exactly the same as what you would do with just a normal debenture. It just runs through opening. The interest is based on the open, just to get some practice in, the open times the market. The repayment is the coupon. That's just the difference. And the close, there are two ways you can know which way to, whether to add or subtract this difference. You know you've got to end up with five million because the face has to be what you end up with. Um, because you started less than the face, you add that on. So add it on, comes down, new interest, repayment's the same, difference is slightly higher, come down and you end up at five million. The other way is, and for those with credit cards that possibly don't pay them off each month, you probably recognize this. If you're accruing interest higher than you're actually repaying it, your balance is going to grow. And that's all that's happened there. The interest component is 475. What you're repaying is 400. That has been added on top of the balance from the start. Um, now, for this question, you'll see the little asterisk. Because the conversion happened, where is it? The holders of the options elect to convert the options to ordinary shares at the end of the second year. That means this line for this particular question is actually not relevant. I've included it just to show you that if you work this all out, you end up with $5 million. But for this question, that 2017 line is not required. Uh, so at the end of the first year, interest expense is 475. The repayment is the 400. And that is an increase to the opening balance. So we credit liability 75,173. We come down to 2016 and they, they convert at the end of the year, so there is a cost of the interest, and you do pay. We're assuming the, the payment of the, of the coupon has happened before they convert. So interest is 482 from up here. Cash is 400 from up here. And the difference, 82,645, is the change here. So that's a similar process to what you're, what you're used to. And we're going to use a similar sort of process when we look at financial leases next week. So it's one of those things you just got to get used to doing. Now this is the conversion. Spell. So at the end of this year, the balance in the liability is 4.909 million. So that's the balance sitting there in that account. The holder, so again, we'll thank you Emma for volunteering. Emma decides to convert at this point in time, which means the liability gets derecognized because she's waiving, in effect, waiving those rights to those future cash flows. So we get rid of that balance. The equity component, we just get rid of as well. So the 248, 
Now this is in equity and the share capital becomes equity. So this is in effect a reclassification. So we're moving this liability turns into equity, but this is already an equity item. So it's just changing what it's called. We take the balance of the liability at the end of the second year. We take the balance which is sitting there in that equity component. And whatever these two add up to is the share capital that you credit. And that successfully converted that bond. There's no liability sitting there. There's no more of that kind of equity component that we started with. And we just have now created share capital. Um, we haven't got money for issuing that share capital. Um, not of that, no, we haven't. Although we have saved having to pay out money later on. Um, but yeah, that's working through a compound financial instrument. <coughs> 